Hello again everybody and welcome back to Fujits Blitz and today we're going to do something a bit different. We're sticking with the historical stuff but we're going to move away from tanks and we're going to look at uh, a new series called Strange But True and kicking off this series we're going to look at a bizarre SS unit also known as the British Free Corps. Now before we get into what the British Free Corps is we need to have a look at what is the SS. Well the SS stands for Schutzstaffel or in German Protection Force basically and it was broken up into various different divisions. Initially there were two divisions the Allgemeine or General SS and the Waffen or Fighting SS. The Allgemeine SS itself was a general SS. It was basically there to deal with Nazi racial policy and policing. In fact, the police fell under the Schutzstaffel as an entire force. And under the Nazis, the police themselves were broken into three constituent parts. You had the Kriminalpolizei, also known as the Kripo. These were the normal everyday police who dealt with normal everyday police stuff. You had the Schierheitspolizei, or SIPO who dealt with state political criminal investigations, which was deemed more serious than what the Kripo would deal with. And then you had the Geheimstaatspolizei, more better known as the Gestapo, who were the German secret state police. The other arm of the SS was the Waffen SS. These were the fighting force of the SS and they, they basically went into battle alongside the Wehrmacht, which was the normal regular German army. Now, contrary to popular belief, the third Waffen SS Totenkopf, whilst being death's head, were not the concentration camp guards. That was the Totenkopfsverband, which was a further unit of the Schutzstaffel as in its entirety. Eventually, the SS also acquired the Schierheitsdienst, or SD, which was basically the SS intelligence service run by a guy called Reinhard Heydrich. The SS itself was initially set up by Heydrich Himmler as Germanically pure. This was effectively the, mo the purest and elitist of all the Germans. The true epitome of the master race, you know, blonde haired and blue eyed. However, as the war dragged on, the resources within Germany were drying up. So the SS itself, as a competing military force to the Wehrmacht, decided to relax some of its recruitment styles and opened its doors to foreign troops. Which is ironic because the Wehrmacht didn't, <laughs> strangely enough. And a lot of European countries really believed in this fight against Bolshevism. In fact, on the screen at the moment, you're seeing the SS Hanshar division, which is actually made up of Bosnians, who are predominantly a Muslim country. The irony was that a lot of these European countries, such as France, Holland, Denmark, and Romania, joined forces with the Waffen SS. And one that joined forces was the British. And this is a early recruitment poster for the British to be recruited into the German Waffen SS forces. It was initially taken up by this guy, John Amory. Now, John Amory is an interesting chap. His father, oddly enough, is Leo Amory, who was a Conservative MP and the Secretary of State for India and Burma during the war. John Amory approached the normal German forces, the Wehrmacht, when he was a prisoner of war in order to, he, he floated the idea of recruiting British soldiers who were in prisoner of war camps to fight purely against the Russians. Now the Germans weren't against this, in fact they sent him out to try and do some recruitment. Unfortunately, John Amory wasn't very good at recruiting and he only recruited two people, Frank McLardy and another guy called Alfred Mitchin. That was it. He only recruited two. So the Germans dispensed with forces in 1943 and they brought the entire concept into the realms of the Waffen SS. Under Amory it was actually called the Legion of St. George. When the SS came about they changed that name to the British Free Corps. Apparently a name that was coined by the one of the the second ever recruit which was Alfred Minchin. Ironically in true Brexit style however 
The British really weren't interested in joining forces with the Germans, unlike the French who had over 20,000 volunteers and the Romanians who by far had the most volunteers at 40,000. In fact, the total strength of the British Free Corps was no greater than 56 personnel. That is officially listed. But fighting strength, they never went over 27. Most of the recruits joined for about a day or so and then left for some reason or another. Majority of them were disillusional young men, misfits, some were petty criminals who just wanted a better life than what they were receiving within the prisoner of war camp. However, some were ardent anti-Bolsheviks and some were committed fascists. However, as a fighting force, they really <laughs> weren't anything to come by. They, they were sent for training and apparently their training report was they were absolutely awful. They, they weren't particularly good at um, many of the things that the German army were used to. And as a fighting force, well, it's, it's negligible if they would have brought anything to the fighting capabilities of the German army. By 1945, they were sent to the Eastern Front, where they were attached to the Waffen-SS Division Nordland, which was another SS foreign fighting legion, this time made up of Scandinavian troops. The unit itself, while comprising of uh, members of the British and its Commonwealth at the time, was always commanded by an ethnically pure German who spoke English. In 1945, initially it was Obersturmführer Dr. Walter Kulisch, who then handed over a command to Hauptsturmführer Dr. Alexander Dolziak. The unit itself did have non-commissioned officers, and there is reports of one officer. By the time it moved to the Oder Front, it was commanded by Scharfjörder Marden, or Douglas Marden, as his name is a British national. Now, Scharfjord basically means platoon or squad leader, and there's only 27 guys in this unit, so he hasn't got many guys to command. According to contemporary reports, although this is debated, whilst they were entrenching in the Oder Front, they were surprised by a Russian advance party who attacked them, and they held themselves out wow, fighting alongside their brothers in the SS Nordland. They then counterattacked and repelled the Soviet advance. Although some historians do argue that the British Free Corps never actually saw any action and not a single shot was fired in anger. Mm, but it's debatable because we do know they were sent to the Oda Front and we do know they were attacked. And whilst they were part of a bigger division, the chances are they did partake in some action. They were eventually withdrawn from the Oda Front along with the Nordland for the defence of Berlin, falling under Obersgruppenführer Felix Steiner whose infamous Kampfgruppe Steiner was Hitler's last grasp for the defence of Berlin. Felix Steiner, however, had no intention of fighting a prolonged war and he quickly decided to turn his troops westwards and surrender to the Allied forces of the British and the Americans advancing into Germany that way. And with some bitter irony, the forces left to defend Berlin were basically the SS Charlemagne, a French division, and SS Viking, part of Nordland. With regard to the members of the British Free Corps, not a single one of them died in action, and a lot of them faced capture by the Allies at the end of the war, and they were tried as traitors. Here we have a picture of Kenneth Barry and Alfred Mitchin, Alfred Mitchin being on the right, the second ever member of the British Free Corps, at the time it was called the Legion of St. George. Moving on we then have Roy Corlander, a New Zealander who was a Unterschaff Fjorder and survived the war. He was sentenced to 15 years in jail but he refused to fight against anybody other than the Bolsheviks and eventually ended up fighting against the Germans towards the end of the war in any event. And he has the dishonour of being the first member of the British Free Corps to have been captured by the Allies. And eventually he did manage to appeal his court case and his sentence was reduced. Moving on to Thomas Haller Cooper, 
who was actually an ethnic German. He was a Volkische Deutsch. His mother was German, and at the start of the war, he was actually studying in Stuttgart. Initially, he was arrested as a spy, or an alien, because he was British, but he produced his Germanic certificate, and he was then offered a role in the Waffen-SS. He eventually found out his father was serving in the British Armed Forces, so he decided to leave the SS, and he was placed upon arrest. He then reconsidered his position and decided that actually he wasn't going to renounce his time in the SS and he was transferred to the Tottenkopf, which is the SS Death's Head Brigade, more notoriously known for running the concentration camps. He went with the 5th Tottenkopf, which is part of the 3rd Waffen FS, to the Russian front where he was badly wounded. In fact, he has the uh, distinction of being the only British national to be awarded a German military medal for combat during the whole of World War II, which was the wound badge in silver. He was eventually transferred to the British Free Corps in 1944, but then, for some reason, he was arrested for various heinous crimes committed against the Nazis and was dismissed from the British Free Corps. He was eventually captured by the Allies. He stood trial at the end of the war, sentenced to execution. It was commuted two days before he was due to be executed. We then have Eric Reginald Peasants. Peasants, a, nor a merchant seaman, was caught on the hop in the Channel Islands when the Germans invaded and he was subsequently arrested. He eventually decided to collaborate and become a member of the British Free Corps but had a change of heart and demanded to be sent back to his initial prisoner of war camp where he was then not actually sent back. He was dismissed from the SS and sent to a punishment camp instead. He rejoined the British Free Corps later in 1944, but he eventually managed to desert from the SS in 45 and went into hiding. He was then captured by the Red Army in 1946, so he lasted quite a long time on the run uh, before he was repatriated to England in 1952. No action actually taking by the authorities against him because they deemed he had suffered enough under Russian hands. We then move on to Alfred Mitchin, who by all accounts was the second person to ever be recruited into what was then the Legion of St. George. And when that was dismissed and transferred to the Waffen SS, he is credited with the person to come up with the name of the British Free Corps. He was eventually captured by the Allies and sentenced to seven years hard labour. One of the more famous pictures of British Free Corps is this man, William Britton, who joined in 1943. Um, but by 1945, he had decided to desert, and he confided in his girlfriend, who was Norwegian at the time, that this was his intention. She, in fact, denounced him to the Gestapo. He was arrested. He was finally captured by the Allies and sentenced to 10 years in prison. One of the more infamous members of the British Free Corps is this man, Douglas Berneville Clay. An interesting character. He was captured in 1942. Um, sent to a prisoner of war camp, whereby he decided to start informing on his fellow prisoners. By nature he was a petty criminal and effectively a con man. He made out that he was a captain in the Coldstream Guards, that he was an hereditary peer, being a lord, <laughs> amongst other things. Uh, apparently he had dinner once with Obergruppenführer Felix Steiner of Camp Group Steiner fame. He eventually stole a truck and deserted from the German army. By all accounts, his personality was the inspiration behind Jack Higgins's character in the book The Eagle Has Landed. Whilst he evaded justice for his role as a so-called traitor, mainly because the British Free Corps, who gave evidence against him, found that their testimony was tainted because of who they were, and it wasn't long though before he fell back into his ways of being a con artist and ended up in jail in any event. It's fair to say the British Free Corps was merely a novelty act, potentially a propaganda coup, out of over 200,000 British and Commonwealth servicemen captured by the Germans during World War II, this unit managed to have as a total strength 56 with an overall fighting strength of 27, minuscule in the circumstances. 
Yes, there is potentially evidence that the unit did take part in some fighting, but nothing much. It was more of a propaganda thing. And as you can see, there were Waffen SS uniforms whereby they had a cuff titled British Free Corps, they had the Union Jack emblem, and on this picture here, you can see where the SS runes would normally be, there are three lions instead. However, it still remains that this was a novelty comic unit staffed by men who effectively wanted to get out of the prisoner of war camps thinking that they would get a better life or at least a more sensible life that didn't stop the germans from recruiting however and it just goes to show that even in germany where the ss was the pinnacle of the master races racism elite they would have taken anybody regardless by this stage of the war and considering their recruitment drive yielded about 0.01 percent of total um, british and commonwealth prisoners it's fair to say not many were swayed to join this unit anyway that has been a brief overview of the british free corps one of the more bizarre german units of world war ii I've been Fujit by all means. Comment and all the rest below. We will be continuing with this series and the next in the series will be on another bizarre SS unit, this time the Derlivanger Brigade. Another strange but true 